In this video, I'll show you how the product rule works. The product rule is used when you want to find the derivative function of a product of two other functions. Here is an example of a function, h of x, that is the product of two other functions. The way I've written it, it should be pretty clear what the formulas are for these other two functions. f of x is the linear function 3x minus 2, and g of x is the linear function 2x plus 1. And if I asked you to find the derivative function, h prime of x, your instinct might be to do something that, it turns out, isn't correct. You might first think that the derivative of f of x is 3, and the derivative of g is 2, and then you'd just multiply the derivatives of f and g to get h prime of x is equal to 6. But unfortunately, your instinct would be wrong here. If you went through and multiplied f and g, you'd see that h of x is 6x squared minus x minus 2, and the power rule tells us that the derivative of h is actually 12x minus 1, not 6. What we need is a method to quickly compute the derivative of a product of two functions. This is called the product rule. The rule says if h of x is the product of f of x and g of x, to compute the derivative of h of x, you first multiply the derivative of g by f, and then add to that the derivative of f times g. For example, in this case, we know that the derivative of f is 3, and the derivative of g is 2. So to use the product rule, we would multiply the derivative of g by f, and then add the derivative of f multiplied by g. When you combine these terms, you get 12x minus 1, which matches what we'd get if we'd use the power rule with h of x. I'll show you a couple more examples. Here are six functions that we'll look at as examples. The first thing to do is to recognize when you can and can't use the product rule, that is, when the function is made up of two other functions that are multiplied together. Take a minute to look at each of these and decide for which ones you could use the product rule to compute their derivative. How about p of x? There are a lot of terms here, but the parentheses can help you recognize that p of x is made up of two functions, 3x squared minus pi x plus root 2 times the natural log of x and you probably know how to compute the derivative of each of these. Next, how about q of x? Not having parentheses makes it trickier to recognize when two functions are being multiplied, and at first it might look like this has three terms rather than two. But you can treat 3e e to the x as one function, and sine of x as another, and you can use the product rule here. Next, let's look at r of x. You might think that there are two functions here, natural log and 3x minus 1. There are, but they're not being multiplied. Instead, 3x minus 1 is being used as the input to the natural log function. The product rule only gets used when you're multiplying two functions, so it doesn't apply here. Next, let's look at s of x. You might notice that it is actually made up of three functions that are multiplied together. 3x minus 2, e to the x, and sine of x. It's possible to use the product rule here if you think of e to the x times sine of x as a single function. And you know that you can find the derivative of this red function, although it will involve a second application of the product rule. How about t of x? At first, it looks like there are three functions being multiplied, cosine, 2x, and log base 2 of x. However, just like in r of x, the 2x is being used as an input to cosine. It's not being multiplied by cosine. So even though t of x is made up of two functions, cosine of 2x and log base 2 of x, in order to use the product rule, you need to compute the derivative of cosine of 2x. Finally, let's look at u of x. You're probably looking at that square and thinking that it's a little bit like t of x. But if we expand the expression, then you can see that u of x is a product of three functions, cosine of x, cosine of x, and log base 2 of x. And you could use the product rule the same way you did with s of x, by thinking of two functions together, and using the product rule a second time to compute the derivative of the blue part. So we could use the product rule with all of these remaining functions. However, s of x and u of x would require that you use the product rule twice each, and t of x would require something called the chain rule. So let's just look at the simpler functions here, p and q. I'll start by putting the product rule up here. For both p and q, you'd want to start by identifying the f and the g then computing their derivatives. Here is a table to keep things organized. 
First, for p of x, we know that the two functions that are being multiplied are 3x squared minus pi x plus root 2, and the natural log of x. Then we need to figure out their derivatives, which are 6x minus pi and 1 over x. Next, we put these together following the product rule. We multiply g prime, which is 1 over x, by f, which is 3x squared minus pi x plus root 2. Then we add to that f prime, which is 6x minus pi, multiplied by g, which is the natural log of x. Similarly, to find the derivative of q of x, we know that the two functions that are being multiplied are 3e to the x and sine of x. Then we need to figure out their derivatives, which are 3e to the x and cosine of x. Next, we put these together following the product rule. We multiply g prime, which is cosine of x, by f, which is 3e to the x. Then we add to that f prime, which is 3e to the x, multiplied by g, which is sine of x. And that is how you use the product rule.